All right, in the previous video, we talked about interval notation with uh, finite intervals. Now we want to talk about infinite intervals. Okay, so let's do just some examples, just like we did in the previous video. So if you haven't seen the previous video, um, we do talk about some fundamental concepts that we'll use here. So if you haven't seen that, uh, you might want to check that out if you're unfamiliar or unsure of what we're about to do here. So um, let's just start with an example. Let's say we have the set of all x such that uh, negative 3 is less than or equal to x. So if we were to draw this on a number line, what would we have? So we'd have a negative 3 over here. We'll fill it in with a dark circle. And then negative 3 less than or equal to x. So that means x is everything greater than or equal to negative 3, right? x is greater than or equal to negative 3, if we read that right to left. So that's everything over here. Okay? And it does keep going on forever here. Okay? So this is an example of an infinite interval because it's not bounded on this side. Okay? It's bounded over here by negative 3 but it keeps going on infinitely far this way. Okay, so it's an example of an infinite interval. Okay, so um, now we can also express this as negative three is less than or equal to x, or we could say uh, x is greater than or equal to negative three. Okay, so either one of these, okay, this one, so this guy here, or this guy here, we could use either one of these to describe this interval here, right, um, with inequality notation. Now, what if we wanted to do interval notation? Okay, what's different about this? Um, from the previous video. Now in the previous video we had uh, numbers on both sides, but now what do we have going on? Okay, we have uh, negative 3, okay, and then everything larger than that. So what we say is negative 3 and then plus infinity, okay? Um, so let's make that infinity symbol a little easier to read. Okay. So negative 3 up to positive infinity. Now is that plus sign necessary? No, not really. Um, but I did have a professor in college who was really um, insistent that we use a plus sign, and he had various reasons, and they were good reasons. Um, but it's, it's, we don't want to get too much into the details here. But really, there is a positive infinity and a negative infinity, and you do want to be clear that you're talking about positive infinity. But anyway, um, little nitpicky details. So put a square bracket on the negative 3 because it's less than or equal to, okay? And then uh, infinities always get rounded parentheses, okay? So um, infinities always get rounded parentheses. So that's very, very, very important. Okay? So that's uh, one example of a type of uh, an infinite interval. Okay? Now we could also have something like, uh, okay, well, let's, how would this change if we had a strict inequality? Okay, so what if it were a strictly less than? What if negative 3 was strictly less than x? Well, then also uh, this circle would be hollow, right? The, hollow, the circle would be hollow. Um, this would be strict inequality, strict inequality. And remember, in the previous video, we talked about this. Uh, strict inequality means we get a rounded parenthesis, okay? But still, round parenthesis on the infinity, okay? So that's how things would be different here. Okay, so just want to point that out. Um, what if we have something like this? What if we say the set of all x such that um, x is less than... Uh, or equal to 5. Okay, x is less than or equal to 5. Okay, well let's go ahead and draw that on a number line. So we'll put 5 over here. It's uh, less than or equal to, so we have a solid circle, filled in circle here. And since x is less than or equal to 5, that's everything to the left. Okay, everything to the left of 5. So it's uh, including 5 and everything to the left, so it's going to be like that. Now this is another type of infinite interval because it's uh, you know, it's bounded over here on this side, but it goes infinitely far in this direction. So it's an infinite interval, okay? Now, what about um, inequality notation? So just like over here, we had two ways of describing the interval. Uh, now here, we can describe this interval two different ways. Um, so we could say x is less than or equal to 5, okay? Just like it says up here, so we just pull that part out. Or we could say um, 5 is greater than or equal to x, okay? So either this guy right here or this guy right here, either one is totally perfectly acceptable, right? So how do we express this in interval notation, though? Well, um, here in interval notation, uh, what's it going to be? So negative infinity, okay? Here the negative, this minus sign really is mandatory. It is required to have that because um, we are talking about negative infinity off in the negative direction. And then we go up to 5 with the square bracket, okay? Okay, so be careful. Don't answer it like this. Don't say 5 comma negative infinity. That is uh, totally 100% absolutely wrong. Um, you always do the smaller one first. Okay, smaller one on the left, comma, 
larger one on the right. Okay, so smaller one comma larger one. Okay, negative infinity is kind of smaller than everything, right? So that's always comes first. Okay, just like over here, negative three smaller than positive infinity. Okay, so when you fill in, when you do the um, interval notation, just read the number line from left to right. Okay, so what happens first? Well, negative infinity that always comes first. Okay, negative infinity always comes first, and then anything else after that. Okay, so always do the smaller one first, and then the uh, larger one after that. And again, square bracket on the five because it's uh, less than or equal to, or we can say greater than or equal to, but the point is it's a square bracket because it's blah 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 or equal to, okay? Or equal to or equal to, so it gets a square bracket. And again, always, always, always round parentheses on the negative infinity, okay? So whether it's positive infinity or negative infinity, always, always, always round parenthesis on that, okay? Okay, now just like before, what if we take this off and what if we do a strict inequality? What changes? Well, first of all, this circle becomes an open circle, Okay, these inequalities also become strict. So x is strictly less than five, uh, x is strictly less than five, or five is strictly greater than x. What changes here? Negative infinity comma five, now this becomes a round parenthesis, okay? So again, this doesn't change at all, it's still always, always, always a round parenthesis on the negative infinity. Um, and here, strict inequality on the five, so remember strict inequality corresponds to a round parenthesis, okay? okay. So, um, and again, for, for these uh, infinities here, you can think of this as like uh, negative infinity is less than x is less than five. So you can think of it like that, or you can even think of it the other way around. Five is greater than x is greater than uh, negative infinity. But it's probably safer to think of it like this, because the smaller one should always come first in the interval notation, so it's safer to think of it like that. Um, but anyway, and you know, negative infinity can never be equal to, okay, it doesn't make sense to say that. Negative infinity can never be equal to a number, uh, x can never be equal to a variable. Because negative infinity and positive infinity, those aren't real numbers, okay, they're not numbers. They're just sort of abstract concepts, really. Um, they're just symbols that represent these abstract concepts of being infinitely large or infinitely small, things like that. Um, or infinitely large in the positive direction, infinitely large in the negative direction. So just things like that, that's all they represent. So they're not actual real numbers, so they can't be equal to a variable. So that's why we can never have a square bracket on the infinities, because they don't actually represent any numbers. Okay. Um, they just represent infinitely large amounts in the positive direction, infinitely large amount in the negative direction. Okay. So um, now there's another type of infinite interval we can have. So let's talk about that. Um, now another type of infinite interval we can have is uh, one that extends across the whole line. Okay. So here, this one stopped at negative three and went all the way across to the right. Um, the other one stopped at uh, five over here and went all the way to the left. Now we can have another type that goes all the way across both ways. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So if you want to take a look at that, Uh, then what we say is give me the set of all x such that uh, negative infinity is less than x is less than positive infinity. Okay, and there are actually other ways of saying that too. So you can say give me x such that x is a real number. So we could also say uh, set of all x such that uh, x is a real number. Okay, so remember this, uh, we talked about this type of notation uh, in earlier videos. So if you're not familiar with that, you might want to check those videos out. So this is from the uh, common sets of number video, and this is from a much earlier video uh, near the beginning of this section. So anyway, um, if we were to draw this on a number line, uh, this would just be everything, right? Everything from negative infinity up to positive infinity. Okay. So all the real numbers, basically. So. Um, and really, the only way we could express that uh, with interval, or sorry, inequality notation would be like this. Okay, so um, what about interval notation? How do we do that? Well, with interval notation, the only real way is to say this. So everything from negative infinity all the way up to positive infinity, like that, okay? So, um, you know, for these guys here, we can have as many types of these as we want, because we don't have to stop at negative 3. We can stop at negative 3.5, negative 3.2 negative square root of 3, okay, positive square root of 3, positive square root of 13, and so on and so forth. Same thing over here, we can stop at any number we want. 
But over here, there's really only one type of interval that goes across the whole line, and it's from negative infinity to infinity. Okay. And again, um, always, 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 so this is really super important, so I'm going to write it down. Um, always always use a rounded always use rounded parentheses on uh, positive and negative infinity. So let me actually write it like this. On uh, positive infinity and negative infinity. Okay. Okay, always, always, always. So, um, you know, no matter what else is going on, if you have negative infinity, it has to have a rounded parenthesis, no matter what's happening with this other number. Okay, now this other number might have a parenthesis or a square bracket. Okay, just like, remember, when it was a strict inequality, or sorry, when it was or equal to, Okay, less than or equal to, that means this is filled in. Less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, so this was a square bracket, right? So, you know, whatever's going on with this, if this other thing is a number, whatever's happening with it, um, it doesn't matter what's happening with that. It doesn't affect this, okay? Negative infinity always gets this uh, rounded open parenthesis. Positive infinity always gets this rounded closed parenthesis. Always, 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 always. Uh, no exceptions to that, okay? And the reason is, again, because x can never equal negative infinity x can never equal positive infinity. So remember, the square bracket means x could equal 5. Okay, x is less than or equal to 5. So or equal to means square bracket. Okay? Um, but x can never equal negative infinity, because negative infinity is not a real number. It's not a number at all. It just represents an abstract concept, more or less. Um, and again, x could never equal positive infinity. Okay? It's not really a thing that happens. Um, so anyway, always use rounded parentheses on plus infinity and negative infinity, okay? And lots of exclamation points because that's super important. So anyway, that's um, interval notation for infinite intervals. And then we'll do some examples uh, coming up in the next uh, video, starting in the next video.